Here's another problem. An object starts from rest and accelerates uniformly to a speed of 7 meters per second in 2 seconds. Determine the object's displacement. An object starts from rest and accelerates uniformly to a speed of 7 meters per second in 2 seconds. Uh, so this is an S. I hope you can see this is an S for seconds. Uh, 2 seconds. Determine the object's displacement. As usual, please carefully and accurately copy this problem into your notes. Uh, and then systematically use our systematic approach and notation for solving this problem. So now is a good time to pause the video and do those tasks. Well, we'll start by drawing the object's path. Again, this is really a simple linear motion. We're starting in one place and moving someplace else. Say we're moving to the right. Um, they didn't tell us that we're moving horizontally, but let's say we're moving horizontally. And they didn't say what direction we're moving, so let's say we're moving to the right. Um, so the velocity tells us which way we're moving. So we're moving to the right. Now which way should the acceleration point? Now remember, the acceleration doesn't point the way you're moving. It just tells you if you're speeding up or slowing down. Well, if we're starting from rest and accelerating, we must be speeding up. If we're starting from rest and accelerating, we must be speeding up. That means that the acceleration should point in the same direction as the velocity. That, since they're pointing in the same direction, we're speeding up. And let's go ahead and indicate that the question here's the question. The question is asking us for this displacement, the displacement from this point to this point. So those are all good things that would be good to write down in step one when you're drawing the path, even for such a simple problem as this. Step two, choose an axis. Well, let's choose an x-axis that is parallel to our motion. Um, and Again, it's usually best to choose the direction of motion as positive. So if you wanted to make your life interesting, you could choose left as positive here, but let's make our lives boring and choose right as positive. Since we decided to imagine the object is moving to the right, let's choose to the right as our positive direction. This little arrow here is supposed to indicate that rightwards is our positive x direction. All right, now step three would be to break things into components, but that doesn't really apply to one-dimensional motion. So we're on to our very important step four, which is to write the kinematics variables. So there we go. We've written our kinematics variables. OK, now we're going to read through the problem very carefully, and um, we're going to uh, then write down all our given numbers and the question. An object starts from rest. Well, here's that hidden information again. That's really telling us that the initial velocity is zero. Remember to read carefully. An object starts from rest, so the initial velocity was zero. And accelerates uniformly. That means constant acceleration. Remember, we couldn't even use this approach if the acceleration was not uniform and constant. To a speed of 7 meters per second. Well, that must be the final velocity. It's accelerating to 7 meters per second. Now, what I wrote down on the board should make you feel very uncomfortable. We never want to write down a velocity without a sign. So let's put uh, a sign in. Well, um, they didn't actually give you the sign in the problem. So we have to pick the sign that makes sense. Uh, well, again, uh, we decided to imagine that we're moving to the right, and that rightward is our positive direction. So the velocity should be positive. So even though they didn't tell us the velocity is positive, we should be able to figure that out. All right, don't be easy on yourself. If you did this whole problem, but you didn't include this positive sign, then you're not really learning the method. And you're setting yourself up for mistakes on harder problems. Always include the signs for um, velocity, acceleration, and displacement. So um, we ended up with positive 7 here in 2 seconds. This is the one thing that doesn't need a sign. We don't need to show the sign on the time. That's always positive. Uh, determine the object's displacement. Now again, if you did the whole problem, but you forgot to use a question mark for the question, you should be upset about that. Our whole goal here is to find systematic notation. It's really useful to get into the habit of always labeling the question with a question mark. So try to make that part of your constant process. OK, so that was our uh, step uh, four. Um, how do we know when we're ready for step five, ready to pick out an equation? Uh, well, remember that it's when we've got three numbers. Well, we got that now three numbers. So we should pick out an equation. We should pick the equation that's missing the acceleration. We should pick the equation that's missing acceleration. So 
So here's the uh, equation that's missing the acceleration. This is an equation that we haven't had a chance to use yet. So now we start plugging in. What do we plug in for delta x? Well, we leave that as a variable. That's what we don't know. Here's where the question mark helps us. It reminds us we don't plug anything in for that. What do we plug in for the initial velocity? Well, that's zero. Notice that before I plug in the final velocity, I put in parentheses, because I know I'm going to want to set off the signs. I don't want to confuse the sign on this velocity with this plus sign. Well, this velocity is plot positive 7. And that's over 2. And then the time is 2. So this is times the number 2. That doesn't need a sign. All right, now I know that at this point this might, this might seem a little weird that I'm insisting that you say plus positive 7, but I'm just going to have to ask you to trust me. Um, again, the biggest source of mistakes, or one of the biggest sources of mistakes, not just in kinematics but throughout physics, is getting the signs wrong. And the first step to getting the signs right is always being hyper-conscious about the signs. So I hope that you can uh, uh, put some trust in me here and actually write down the sign separately from this plus. So again, you can see why we need these parentheses um, to separate the addition sign from the plus sign. When you initially plug your signed numbers into your equations, put them in parentheses and indicate the sign. This is a habit that's going to pay off many, many fold as you go through your physics class. And if you don't develop this habit, you're going to miss question after question because of stupid, careless mistakes where you forgot to think about the sign. Um, again, um, People who are already comfortable with physics don't need to indicate the signs like this so carefully. They can skip some steps. But again, I'm intending these videos for people who know that they're having difficulty. Well, if you know you're having difficulty, try to adopt this exact notation. The way I'm writing this problem on the board is precisely the way that I would recommend that you write it in your notes. Try to imitate this as closely as possible if these problems are giving you difficulty. All right, now we need to simplify. Uh, well, the zero just going to disappear, and we end up with a 7 over 2 times 2. Remember that after you initially plug in the numbers, then it's perfectly fine to start um, eliminating some of the signs. In fact, you have to do that or things are going to be too complicated. So you only need the signs when you initially plug in, then start simplifying. It. This is 7 halves times 2. I hope that's not difficult arithmetic for you. Um, we might say that this is 2 over 1, uh, and then we can cancel the 2's, cancel them diagonally. and we end up with delta x equals 7. Now I hope that nobody wrote this as their final answer. This is very incomplete. First of all, we need the units. The units for displacement are meters. And this is a signed type of quantity, so we must include the sign on our final answer. So this is a good final answer. The displacement is positive 7 meters. Now we can go back and say, This distance is 7 meters. This is the first time that we've had to use this particular kinematics equation. So let me remind you of something I said before. Uh, let me go ahead and erase some of this work. Remember I mentioned that um, in your textbook, this equation might not be written this way. It might be written. This equation in your textbook might be written like this, and then maybe down below. In your textbook, they might actually separate this equation into two separate equations. They might write that the average velocity um, is equal to initial plus final over 2. That should make sense. We've already talked about why that's the average velocity. And then they plug that into this equation. Well, that's perfectly good, and that actually is good to see because it helps you to remember the equation. It helps you to see that this is really just saying distance equals rate times time. Distance equals the average rate times the time. Uh, the displacement equals the average rate times the time because this expression is the average rate. So it's good to see that this fraction is just the average rate. However, when you're actually solving kinematics problems, I think you can see now that it's much more convenient to just have this written as a single equation. I think you can see that when we solved this kinematics problem, it was helpful to be able to just plug in directly into this equation. So even though this is useful for getting some intuition into this equation, um, when you're actually solving kinematics equations, this is the form of the equation that I encourage you to use, even if this is not how it was written in your textbook. 
Um, so again, at the beginning of these videos, I already have set out a list of what I think are the most useful forms of the five kinematics equations, and those are the forms that I recommend that you use when you're solving problems, including this form. So again, when you're solving kinematics problems, I recommend not really using these forms of the equations. They're not quite as convenient. If this problem gave you difficulty, or if you got it right without being systematic and using systematic notation, please don't proceed until you redo it until you're getting it right systematically with the right notation.